Good morning, good morning, and welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first annual uh, Linux Foundation uh, L3 event in China. I am so happy to be here. Uh, what an amazing group we have. Uh, we have over 2,000 people here today, so welcome to everyone. We have seen incredible support uh, here in China. Uh, in particular, from the sponsors of this event, I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, in particular, our strategic sponsor, Huawei. Uh, let's hear for Huawei. Our diamond sponsors, Alibaba Cloud, Microsoft, and Suse. Our platinum sponsors, Kai Cloud, and our gold sponsor, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and Red Hat. Let's thank our sponsors again. I also want to welcome a few new members uh, to the Linux Foundation. You know, in China, uh, participation from Chinese companies in the Linux Foundation in the last year has grown 400%. The number of companies from China participating in our organization has grown up four times. And our newest members are China Standard Software, MEND, Tencent, and then finally, uh, Alibaba Cloud has upgraded to our gold membership. Please thank our newest members. So I thought I would start out today by talking about the state of open source. So open source has really started to grow into more than just a small group of developers working on a small group of projects to really a new phase. And the question I want to ask today is, are you all ready for that? Now, it's important to remember that Linux is the biggest, most successful, most widely distributed platform in the history of computing. Look at these numbers. It's amazing. But you know, my favorite number aren't these. My favorite number is this. 10,000 lines of code are added to, 5,000 lines of code are subtracted from, and about 1,800 lines of code are modified in Linux every single day. 365 days a year. It's the fastest moving, fastest developed project in the history of computing. Uh, and many of the core developers of Linux, including Linus Torvalds, are here this week. We're very, very happy to have them. That's right. And the Linux Foundation continues to grow. Today, the Linux Foundation has over 800 members. We gather tens of thousands of developers all over the world at hundreds of events like this. The combined value of the projects that we host at the Linux Foundation is worth billions of dollars. And the software that the Linux Foundation hosts runs most of global society. Most of the world's stock markets, most of the world's embedded devices, most of the internet. It is tremendous to see the growth that we're experiencing at the Linux Foundation. And today, the Linux Foundation is much, much more than Linux. As open source becomes an important part of every modern computing system, the Linux Foundation has expanded into new areas of technology, new sectors of computing, with projects like Hyperledger, which is our blockchain initiative. Many, many members from China in that effort. How many people here have heard of Kubernetes? How many people here know Kubernetes, right? One of our uh, newest projects. We have a huge number of projects in the networking sector. In particular, the open network automation platform, ONAP, which is a combination of a project called Ecomp from AT&T, but more importantly, a project called OpenO, which was started here in China by China Mobile and Huawei, and is now 
the biggest network management orchestration uh, project in the world. Started in China and now expanding all over the world. Node.js is one of our projects. Cloud Foundry is one of our projects. We have an automotive project called Automotive Grade Linux, which is being rolled out into millions of production vehicles from companies like Toyota this year. So we've come a long way as an organization. And it's not just the Linux Foundation. We are entering an entirely new phase of software development. You know, in the first phase of open source, in the early days of open source, open source projects tended to copy existing proprietary software, copy the functionality, that is. So a database, you know, sort of MySQL was an open source version of Oracle database, you know, uh, Linux was competing with proprietary operating systems. But what was happening is free alternatives to expensive proprietary software were sort of shrinking the market, right? And sort of creating more efficiency by commoditizing those markets. Today, we are entering an entirely new phase. Today, new economies are being created from open source projects. Today, open source projects aren't copying existing technology, they're leading new technology. With projects like TensorFlow in machine learning and artificial intelligence, Hadoop in big data, Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry in the cloud, all creating completely new ways to think about technology and creating completely new multi-billion dollar economies around these open source projects. It's an entirely new phase. In fact, today, nobody builds any technology, product, or service without open source. You know, in the past, organizations might use a little bit of open source, but today, there's so much software in anything, whether it's an automobile, a consumer electronic device, whether it's the Alibaba cloud, whether it's a Xiaomi cell phone, there are millions and millions and millions of lines of code in anything. There's just too much software to be written for any one organization or person to write it by themselves. And so today, most organizations, the vast majority of the code in any product or service is open source. And companies instead only focus on the small percentage of code that actually adds value to their customers that they know best. And so, we believe at the Linux Foundation that if you don't harvest, if you don't take advantage of this shared R&D, you won't be able to compete. Organizations that aren't good at taking open source software, bringing it into their organization, modifying it for their needs, and then creating products and services for their customers with that open source, if you can't do that, we don't think you'll be competitive. So the question for all of you today, the question for all of you to think about this week is, are you ready for this new phase in open source? Are you able to get to market faster by leveraging shared R&D, like the Linux kernel or Kubernetes or TensorFlow? Do you understand how to bring code in, modify it, and then share it back with your competitors. If you can't do those things, what we think at the Linux Foundation is you won't be able to compete. The good news is, the good news is, there's lots and lots and lots of open source software. Millions and millions and millions of open source projects. On GitHub alone, there are 64 million open source repositories. 
The Apache Software Foundation has hundreds of projects. The Eclipse Foundation has hundreds. The Linux Foundation has dozens and dozens of projects. And so the good news is that there's lots of open source for you to use. The question you should ask yourselves is which open source projects really matter? What are the open source projects that have the most value, that have the most developers, that solve the biggest problem, that are used in the most products, that are used for the most critical infrastructure? And at the Linux Foundation, we think about this question all the time. How do we identify the most important open source projects in the world? And then how do we create a sustainable ecosystem around those projects? We think that the most important open source projects in the world are those that have sustainable ecosystems. Code that solves a big problem, that's used to create value in commercial products and services. That value is then invested back into the project which gets more code, which begets more products and services, which begets more value reinvested back in the project. It looks like this. At the Linux Foundation, our goal for every project that we work on is to create this, a trusted structure where anybody from any company, from any country, from any government can come in and use open source code from one of our projects to create services, to create products, that create profit, that create value, that gets reinvested back into the project. And that software you can count on for 5, 10, 20 years. The Linux kernel is the best example of this in the world. But today, there are lots of other projects, such as Node.js, such as uh, Kubernetes, such as Hyperledger, that are just starting to enter this loop. And we think that these projects are not just important at the kernel level at Linux, but we're working on projects up and down the entire technology stack whether it's at programming frameworks like Node.js, networking technology like Open Network Automation Platform, data plane services like DPDK, FDIO, we're creating value, creating a complete stack. But we think we can do even more. Because not only are these projects sustainable and important, but we think we can lend best practices across all of these projects. So today we have initiatives like the Core Infrastructure Initiative, which is applying security best practices across all open source projects. Secure coding practices, better test coverage, responsible disclosure policy, shared security knowledge across all open source projects. We're building foundations that create a decision-making structure best practices around how to grow developers in your community across all open source projects. We're creating the intellectual property sharing frameworks that allow organizations in any open source project to share what they want to share and keep what they want to keep. And finally, we're providing training. Training in the form of developer courses, developer testing and certification so that we can train the next generations of developers on this new technology and grow our communities even bigger, no matter what community it is. And so we are here in China at this event for the first time to work together with the incredible community here. You know, China is home to some of the most innovative technology companies in the world. You know, 10, 15 years ago, people used to say, oh, well, Chinese companies, they just sort of copy what American companies or other companies do. That's not China anymore. Chinese companies are innovating here, creating incredible original products and experience. Companies like Huawei, the leading network 
technology provider in the world and services company in the world. Companies like Tencent, Alibaba, Baidu, many, many others. And we think that as the companies and people here in China grow the in technology industry, that big open source efforts will come out of China and join the rest of the globe in this shared innovation. And like I said, the Linux Foundation has grown 400% in the last year here in China. Look at all these companies that are participating in the Linux Foundation. And we would love any individual, any organization, you don't even have to join to come and participate in our projects. But most of all, I do want to thank Huawei. You know, I met with Huawei's management team, their CEO, Eric Chu, many years ago. And Huawei made a strategic bet on open source and became the first platinum member of the Linux Foundation and now sits on our board of directors. Huawei is a great example of a company that's leading the way in open source, that is ready to harvest and is currently creating tremendous value from open source technology. And we're going to hear from Huawei today. And finally, we are expanding here in Asia, and the Linux Foundation is committed to China. I've been coming to China for over 20 years, and we are this year making a big commitment to China. We're opening an office in Hong Kong. We will be holding this event every year. We're committed to working with organizations in China to deliver training, to deliver content, and to help organizations succeed with open source in China. Because we know something from years of working on open source. And that is, if individuals in China succeed, if companies in China succeed with open source, everyone succeeds, no matter what country, no matter what company. And we think that is a great thing and that is what we are here to support. So thank you so much for having us here today. We look forward to working in China for decades to come. Thank you.